turn your uh, phones off because we are recording this. Uh, this is actually our 60th speaker in our speaker series, but we've had probably close to 70 museum events. Uh, of course, we do our annual September uh, fundraiser. If you've never been to that, uh, we encourage you to come to our, our gala. We're on Facebook. We have a group and a page, so join those if you do Facebook. We also have an email blast that you can sign up on, and there's a link there on those Facebook pages, or you can contact me and I can input your email. Um, how many have never been to the museum before? If you raise your hand. All of y'all have been here? Some of y'all are, are just <laughs> shy. <laughs> um, the museum celebrates 10 years of having the doors open this year. So a lot of y'all have been coming to 10 years of speakers. Um, 10 years, look at the birth. 10. <laughs> we have sucked 10 years out of your life right there. But uh, we're celebrating 10 years. We opened our doors in August uh, of 2008. Uh, we actually uh, started having the museum events in 2007, uh, but, but 10 years, I think we've accomplished quite a bit during that time. Um, everything that you see here and the building next door, which we haven't done anything with, is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of $400,000 to $500,000 spent. We don't owe anybody anything. Um, we, we do as we get money, and we're very thrifty. And I'm very tight. <laughs> uh, but if you, like I said, if, you, if you've not been to the museum and you've not uh, donated to the museum, we have uh, in that basket over there by the coffee pot, pick up one of those uh, envelopes. And we take anywhere from a dollar to a million. We don't turn anything down. Uh, and everything is, is very much appreciated. Um, <coughs> Like I said, we do have the DVDs for sale, and Phil has been doing those for us since day one. Uh, he burns those for us. We sell them for $10, so in a couple of weeks, this will be, av will be available for purchase uh, if you're interested in those. Some of the things, since this is our very first one for the year, we didn't have one in February because of the weather. And, and we may continue that, that trend for next year also since, since February is kind of, you never know how it's going to be. Uh, and obviously you don't know how April's going to be either, or March. Um, but some of the things that have happened, uh, of course, John Agan, uh, our parish historian, was uh, man of the, got the Man of the Year Award this year, and I don't know how many were at the Chamber Banquet, but that was a well-deserved, I thought, uh, honor for John. And I noticed in today's paper, John's Echoes of the Past is going to start appearing in the paper again, the Men and Press Herald, so I was excited to see that. Uh, you know, John has had some health issues the last few years, and he is, just, he is just a wealth of knowledge. The museum would not, I don't think the museum would be what it is today without all of the knowledge that John has. And of course, uh, here recently, Thad Andrews passed away. Uh, Thad was our president. Uh, he was the one that was instrumental in hiring me in 2007. He gave me a year to work from the house and said, you got a year to figure out how to make it work. And, and we did a lot of pushing and pulling and button heads, but we, <laughs> we got it done. Um, and, and there again, that's, that's somebody that had a, a huge amount of knowledge on the history of Menden and Webster Parish. Um, and, um, you know, that the museum wouldn't be here without that either. There's quite a few people. Uh, all my board members that are here, if you'll uh, raise your hand so everybody can see who's on our board. President back there, stand up. <laughs> she hates me to do this. Lou Snook is our president now uh, of our board. And uh, we're, we're a hard-working board. Um, we have monthly meetings and and we crack the whip at every board meeting. <laughs> but, uh, you know, a lot of people have come up to me tonight and said, I have so-and-so I'd like to donate and be interested in it. 
we're always interested in, in anything that has to do with Mendham or Webster Parish. Just give me a call. I know uh, Kirby has a, a letter jacket. Uh, Ms. Ratcliffe talked about having her, a letter jacket also. Um, one of the things that I'm very proud that we got here about two weeks ago, if you're familiar with Ben Earl Looney paintings, uh, the Hands family that used to run the Rex Theater donated a very early Ben Earl Looney painting. It's huge. And it shows a, a, a mm -hmm. angle of Mendham that I've not ever seen in a photograph or anything. It's, uh, it's, take, it's the painting mm -hmm. is, as if you were standing in the old kitchen lot which is the parking lot across from Habakkuk's facing the uh, courthouse. And it's hanging up out there. I'm very proud uh, to have gotten that from the Hans family. Uh, next month, Harold Turner Thompson, raise your hand, <laughs> is, is going to be our speaker. Um, May 14th, Jeanette Woodard Moreland Kennan, she's going to be talking about Jackie Moreland. Uh, will be our speaker. Then of course, uh, September we'll have our gala. In October, Jan Grigsby Chandler will be talking about the Grigsby family. So we, we have a good lineup for the rest of the year. I hope you can all come out for those. Uh, right now, I'm gonna turn it over to one of our board members, Ann Harlan, so that she can introduce our speaker for the evening. Our speaker this evening is a lifelong friend of mine. He's going to talk about his powerlifting uh, career, and I hope he'll mention a couple of things about high school or junior high or <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Billy Jack Talton. <laughs> Most of us males have a better half, and I'm in that category. My better half, Carolyn Talton. <laughs> and I'm hope, hoping she's uh, at her expert best with all of this uh, technology we're doing today. It's an honor to be back here in Mendon and to see so many familiar faces. Uh, they look a little older now, but you're receiving the same dose from this thing. But glad for you to uh, be here, and I appreciate the museum and the enthusiasm that's moving this forward. Uh, there are a lot of uh, familiar relics out in the lobby. You need to take some time and visit out there. And, uh, there's an old letter jacket out there that I'm familiar with and a few other things. And, uh, and some uh, articles from uh, the time when my dad played on the state championship team in uh, 38 here. And, uh, so it, uh, a lot of memories here for me, and I want to share some of the memories of more recent decades with you today. This was difficult to uh, go through my archives and dig out relevant things. But, uh, we kind of focused in on the powerlifting. It just came up, and I have been heavily involved in it, but uh, football is near and dear to me from the sixth grade at Eastside School all the way through Louisiana Tech and the Twin City Panthers, which you don't know what they are, but we were kind of marginal outlaws that played semi-pro ball. You can get hurt playing that, so I had to quit. Uh, Carolyn, uh, I'm going to tell them about the video. And then I was uh, inducted into the Arklatex Sports Museum Hall of Fame a few years ago, and they requested uh, uh, stuff to uh, put a video together. Stuff, I know that sounds kind of uh, uneducated, but that's what they wanted stuff. And so I got some stuff together, and uh, they made a pretty good video with it, and we narrowed it down to, to about eight minutes. Tanya, are you always late? That's my daughter now. <laughs> After all, I'm her daddy. She sees me. Uh, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> 
but uh, this, this video will give you information about what the sport of powerlifting is. I'm sure all of you are very steeped in knowledge about this sport, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you with my vocabulary and then it's running. <laughs> it looks like it's a battle. <laughs> Powerlifting is an event with weight classes, 10 or 11 weight classes, girls and guys, teenagers, masters, uh, a lot of categories. Uh, but what you'll see is the uh, collegiate division, and I, for 12 years, was the national collegiate chairman, so I was involved in a lot of the... Uh, political movements that shaped the sport for a long time. When it started, uh, collegiate lifting at Louisiana Tech, there were no girls lifting. You know why? There was no division for girls. My daughter finally uh, showed up on the scene and I got busy and the board and I uh, created the women's division of the United States Powerlifting Federation. So we had a an administrative uh, branch that could operate that phase of it. And Tech wasn't particularly open-armed about me having girls sign up for weightlifting and lift very heavy weights. You know how that goes. Actually, girls work better and give you a better effort per pound than guys, so uh, <laughs> it didn't bother me to have them in there competing and you'll see some of them in this uh, video. Video's real animated because it's at a national meeting. People are real hyped up. There's some hype when these things go on, meaning they're excited. But you'll see a lot of hugging and dancing because some of these lifts are determining the national championship in the sport or getting them in position to win it. And uh, you'll see these very strong barbells just flicker up and down. There's a lot of weight being used. Let's watch it, and I'll uh, narrate it. There'll be three officials around the platform. And she's gonna run it back to the start, but that's the girls team. They're scored the same way as the boys. They, the only difference, they've got a lighter weight class and one less heavier weight class. I'm gonna be quiet. Is it gonna talk? Dr. Billy Jack Talk. Few people in the United States have had more of an impact on the sport of powerlifting than Dr. Billy Jack Talton. In one way or another, Dr. Talton has touched lives of many people involved in different levels of powerlifting at high school, collegiate, national, and international competitions. Billy Jack Cotton was born and raised in Menden, Louisiana, and was a starting guard on the Menden High School State Championship football team in 1956, where he was coached by George Doherty. He continued his football career as a guard at Louisiana Tech University under the leadership of Coach Joe Ian. Cotton followed his passion for football as coach for over 13 years at Bastard High School, Captain Tree High School, Northwestern State University, Natchez Academy, and Cedar Creek School in Preston, Louisiana. Dr. Talton assembled the first Louisiana High School powerlifting team at Bastrop High School in 1964-65. The purpose of the competition was to be motivation for the football athletes as they trained for the upcoming full season. That meet was one of the earliest high school powerlifting meets held in Louisiana and has resulted in Dr. Talton being recognized as the father of high school powerlifting in Louisiana. After completing the doctoral program at Northwestern State University, he soon joined the faculty at Louisiana Tech University where he served as a professor of education and head of the physical education department. In 2005, Cotton was recognized as the distinguished alumnus for the College of Education. In 1974, he formed the Louisiana Tech Powerlifting Program, which he coached for 27 years. Dr. Cotton retired as professor emeritus in 2001 and became the winningest coach in the history of collegiate powerlifting, winning 11 men and 11 women's collegiate titles. As he led the tech program, he continued to achieve monumental events for the high school programs. He started the oldest continuing high school meet in the nation, which hosted 22 consecutive Louisiana Tech Invitational High School Meets. In addition, he was the meet director for over 30 other high school meets. 
1994, he was inducted into the Louisiana High School Powerlifting Hall of Fame. In 2000, was recognized by the Louisiana High School Powerlifting Federation as the founder of high school powerlifting in the state of Louisiana. In February 2006, Dr. Tom was inducted into the USA Powerlifting Women's Hall of Fame for his accomplishments at both the high school and collegiate levels. Recently, he worked with current leadership in Louisiana to gain recognition for powerlifting as a Louisiana High School Athletic Association varsity sport for both boys and girls. His involvement continued beyond the national level as he served as coach for the USA Junior World Team in the 1998 and 1999 IPF Junior World Powerlifting Championships. He is a USPF International Powerlifting Category 2 judge and has participated in 30 national and international IPF meets that involved meets held in Europe, Mexico, China, and Greece. In addition, he is active as an international judge in the Special Olympics and Paralympics. Louisiana Tech honored Dr. Talton recently when an area of the Lambright Sports and Wellness Center was named after him. A display wall will include the extensive assortment of awards and accomplishments of the more than 700 Louisiana Tech students who were a part of the 27-year span of Louisiana Tech powerlifting. Dr. Talton is married to the former Carolyn Flanagan from Alexandria. They have two children, Tanya McGowan, wife of Rustin, and Jack Talton of Houston, and grandchildren Sean and Brian McGowan, Trey Talton, and Evangelina Talton. Dr. Billy Jack Talton. <laughs> very honored by that tribute and it was received at the time six or seven other people in unique phases of sport were honored. The traditional basketball and uh, baseball and football but they also honor athletes that are rodeo champions, karate, judo, and all of that. So it's a whole genre of uh, sports and uh, they do a good job and they have a display area in the lobby over in Shreveport. What's that, the Hilton? Yeah, well, somewhere. Okay. What I want to uh, do is uh, hand off some things to Carolyn. You might can just handle them back. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to start off with this. If I can wake this thing up. Uh, what you'll be seeing is the first high school powerlifting team that was recognized as such in Louisiana uh, back when I was at Basque Pasco in 1964, I believe was the year for this. The reason it started, I went to Basque in my first coaching job in high school and we got beat almost every game. Well, I was from Minden in Louisiana Tech where you didn't get beat very often, and it was a little bit disconcerting. I thought surely it'd get better, and it didn't get better. It just kept happening. <laughs> and I, I was depressed. I mean, I guess that's a word. I was kind of mad. That's what I call it. <laughs> uh, I said, there's got to be a way, better way. Uh, Wayne Parker and I did a little closet weightlifting when we were at Menden, but it was not encouraged. And uh, so we didn't do enough, but we did some and, and noticed the difference. When I got to Louisiana Tech and I was playing guard, I got in some drills with some younger players. I was a sophomore. I did pretty good as a player. But these two guys were smaller, uh, they were less experienced, and they were whooping my bottom around all <laughs> over the field, and something was wrong. And I found out, I followed them around and kind of kept an eye, and they'd go into a room every afternoon for an hour or two, and I'd hear things clinking in there, and they had found a weight room and started working out. And I joined them, and it made a difference in the way I felt, and the way I played, and the way I recovered, uh, and my attitude. When you've got a few muscles out there, it's comforting than if you don't have them on a football field. You may just have to show your picture. Okay. 
that's what I was hoping wouldn't happen. We we've, we've been struggling with this thing. Well, it's it's this, old technology. So. Sorry. Are you talking about me? Or <laughs> <laughs> this. I'll pass these around. I hope I get them back. That's the only copy of this uh, team. Of, but uh, you can see in the background some scales and stuff, and I put them through some meets. And then they, they attended meets uh, in the area at the YMCA's uh, down in Monroe and down up in uh, El Dorado. And at that time, I was in my mid-20s, and I tried to lift weights. And, uh, so I'd go with them as team members, and it's real motivating and kind of a, uh, a catalyst for us working together. And we finally got to the point several years later where we were undefeated. But we didn't go to the playoffs because we wound up in a tie game with Warren Eastern, and they won on penetrations or first downs. And it's on the Friday that... Uh, President Kennedy was shot. It's a drizzling rain here like it was in Dallas, I guess, but it's a, it was a real miserable day from a national and local standpoint for us at Bastard. But we had a good team, and I knew that things would be better one day, and I got a uh, call from, uh, from A.L. Williams. He said, Billy Jack, uh, it's working now. It's working now. You have to talk fast. I can't talk fast. They know I always talk slow. I think I speak. Put a picture up there. Put a picture up there. I'll speak. I already tell him that. He can't. 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 He can could help at Tech when I finally got to Tech uh, was that we would have powerlifting meets and that would train people that might be attracted to come to Tech and powerlift and be students and do all the things that were necessary to be successful. I knew how to be successful. You work the right way and you work harder and longer and you have to be enthusiastic when you're doing it. So, that part of it I had down, and so how do you develop the rest of it? Well, we started a high school invitational meet that later grew into the state championships. And why it happened, we'd have these meets at Tech every year, and everybody would come from Louisiana and part of Arkansas to them. And the guys in South Louisiana were not doing legal squats. They wouldn't get depth at the crease between the hip and the thigh. So they got red lighted, which would eliminate you from the meat eventually if you did that three times. And a lot of them did. So they said that we cheated them. And I said, well, go do it yourself in South Louisiana. So they did, and uh, we would have a state championship between the North and the South. And usually the North won. And then the north and the south and the east and the west, and it just kept expanding. And then the Cajun region and blah, blah, till the point where now we have one, two, three, four, five, six regions. And this year in the regional meets, we have had 1,248 lifters participate, gigantic participation. And it keeps escalating. And I'm officiating starting Thursday in the state meet at Ellick. to be there three days, uh, working from daylight to dark. And uh, there were, in this state, 1,368 that participated in regional meets to qualify. And it looks like we're going to have 990 that did qualify and will be down there. Okay. Well, I was having to read it. Okay. Swipe. There. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I started getting these people, as many of them as I could over the years, to come to Tech, and I'll show you a, a picture I like out of the weight room. 
This is one of the uh, power lifters and doing a power clean and the guy in the background is Mike McHale uh, who I coached at Cedar Creek and when he got to Tech he got into the uh, power lift. And I'll show you this one. Tony, I don't want to embarrass you, but if you'd lock out, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> These are two girls that, on the tech power lifting team. The little one on the left happened to be my daughter. And they're picking up 540 pounds. Mm -hmm. She is at, what, about 114 then? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's what I do. I'd go back to Bastrop or I would go to some of the schools where our lifters were from out in East Texas and do demonstrations for high school assemblies and uh, that's paying the price. But it was a lot of fun and of course they were able to go back to their school and show what they were doing at, at Tech. Lifting weights and I hope stay. Donna Longing was from Bassett. Just, just okay. there and put the next one here. I thought since we weren't going on the road every year to the national championships and winning that I got more involved as, uh, as the uh, collegiate chairman and I had influence on where the meet would be held. So in 1978, I held it at Tech. And I got Dino Hinojosa, an artist there at Tech, to do this. These are actual lifters on the team. And uh, that's me in the middle when I had dark hair <laughs> <laughs> and this today they've got all this uh, technology the national meet will be at Texas A&M this year and they've got a website and they you can put stuff in motion you can look at their weight room and I was uh, I was asked to uh, come down and officiate so I'll be down at Texas A&M and again nationally it's getting real big it's not an NCAA sport right now. For a period, for, for a period of time, one year it was, I was able to get Louisiana Tech to appeal to the NCAA and Charlie Bussey and I went to their, the NCAA annual meeting and they allowed it to exist as a uh, uh, interim sport to kind of look at how it operated but Tech backed off the commitment, and so it went from varsity back to club sport. But for one year it was, and their actual letterman at Louisiana Tech that year that lettered in powerlifting, not football or baseball. And uh, so we were on the edge of getting in, but we didn't make it. Come on, you guys, you're hurry up. I'm going to talk faster. Do yeah. something. <laughs> This is what. Is that yes, I'll, do, I'll do it. All right. I'm glad you volunteered for that. That these are our teams, and this was in a national publication. If you noticed, I wrote the article, I did the laundry, I did all that, and that's the team uh, applauding their victory, and it was a joyous day because that was what we were setting about to do. These are. I don't know if you can read those records, but in football programs, you'd open it up and you'd see this page on tech powerlifting. Well, I paid for it. We got it in there. I meaning the tech powerlifting. And we could put our records in there, individual records. There are no women in there because there weren't any women lifting at that time. And then our schedule and everything. And it had a lot of positive effects on the program. The other thing I would do is have demonstration halftime lifts. And this is not a, an official lift, it's just really for show and that's at the halftime at the Memorial Gymnasium and we got it centered up. We were real close to 2,000 pounds but I felt like that guy on the short end was going to go down so we didn't add any more weight. <laughs> One thing that I changed in the uh, award structure is if you won first place, 
you weren't called the first place winner and get a little trophy. You got an All-American certificate, which was kind of styled after the NCAA. I don't know why that. Nope. It'll come on. Okay. <laughs> and uh, this is David Passon, Louisiana Tech. He is a Western guy, and they're pretty rare on the power loop team. And uh, those were his lips, cuts down. Cutstown State is a school in Pennsylvania. And we got crushed in that meeting. That means we didn't lift enough weight. So. Uh, that's one of uh, Tanya's uh, All American certificates. She got second place that time, Tanya. I'm working on that. <laughs> We would go locally. We could get McNeese to agree to go or Lamar at Beaumont, and we'd drive down and have a meet. And I was a stickler on appearance. All of them are supposed to be alike. She must have bleached that jacket. <laughs> I liked a uniform appearance and a uniform effort that was pointed toward victory. We didn't always get there, but that was the intention. But we did get there a time or two, and here's some pictures. You come from the cadet gym in New York State on the campus of West Point Military Academy. The cadet gym, the girls won the championship. They had little blue sweaters with tech, red shirts, and big muscles. They lifted a lot of weight. <laughs> The guys also won. It's a double victory, which is nice. The guy standing in the middle is a medical doctor in Shreveport, I mean in Monroe. He's got two of the strongest sons their age that power lift in the world. You say, well, how can you make this? Because they go to world meets and win first. And uh, he's a good friend of the team. And we had a, a real good trip. I got to tell this story and I'll quit telling stories, but the Commandant of West Point was a general, naturally, and he had gotten put in that position of running our service academy from something he did in the Grenada action off of the coast of South America. I, I didn't follow all that. But uh, one of the cadets brought him up and said, uh, Coach Talton, uh, Miss General so-and-so would like to talk to you. It's near the end of the meet. The outcome was not in doubt, by the way. It wasn't Wake Island, but it was. Uh, so I, I said, okay, I'd, like, I'd be glad to visit. So he said, I pre he came up and said, I appreciate you uh, hosting the meet here at West Point. And I said, well, everything's going great. And he said, well, how do you think the cadets are going to do? I said, and I'm talking to a general in the Army on his own turn. <laughs> I don't think Army's going to win, General. I didn't tell him I know Tech's going to win. I just said, I don't think <laughs> I thought it's diplomatic, because I thought they'd put me in the slammer. <laughs> OK, she said, hurry up, my hurry. Real quick, that's the national champion. The meet was held at the, in Chicago. And again, we had a, a real good performance. We had fewer lifters, but you're not required to have a number. It's what you have and the number that they produce. Uh, you say, well, what are some of the numbers? Well, these are old, old times, but uh, Roxanne was a 105 pounder from CrossFit, and uh, she could total 675 pounds <laughs> three power lifts. And I found out the strongest lifters were in Texas, and I, so I went out in there and got them. <laughs> and this is Calvin Dow. He lived it out in the Dallas area. Bill Persinger was his coach, and I'd invite that high school team into our invitational meeting. They, they put it on the Louisiana teams. 
he could squat at a body weight of 145, 650, bench 303, and deadlift 567, and total 15. Mm -hmm. we went <clears throat> I'm going to move on with this. I know I can't. I will show this one. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe not. Well, it gets hot. Just okay. This is a double deadlift, and uh, this young lady was a pom pom girl. Is that what you call those things? Uh, and this is uh, Lance Mays. Uh, his son just graduated from Bel Air High School and is an excellent Texas power lifter. Always had thoughts of recruiting those children, but uh, I'm not active in that anymore. And you ready? Along the way, I got certified to officiate different areas of powerlifting, not just collegiate, not just able-bodied open categories, but uh, the Special Olympians and Paralympians. And I, I've gone overseas three times with the Special Olympics. I didn't like going to China, I'll be truthful with you. Uh, I was getting nervous about whether they could find me and get me from the airport to the meat site because my Chinese wasn't up to par. And one of the happiest signs I ever saw was Billy Jack. <laughs> In English. In English. It's me. It's me. Take me and bring me back when it's over. But I went to uh, Athens, Greece and the Czech Republic. I, I've got to do a lot of uh, traveling that way, and uh, it's an interesting side benefit. Uh, it'll, it'll come up. I, I'm about to get through with this. These two girls are doing a demonstration deadlift, and they got a good even pull on the bar. Uh, that was a high visibility thing. Sometimes there'll be two or three thousand at the meet and I don't know how they fouled up and let me in there at the halftime of a women's game with the University of Tennessee and Pat Summit and Sonia Hogue. That thing was full. We walked out and did a halftime and they were doing an interview at the table with one of those coaches and we were in the background and ESPN started getting calls. We'd like to see who's doing that lifting in the background. So <laughs> we, we got on the national stage barely. <laughs> so in case you haven't had enough, you can look at me talking in this picture. <laughs> <laughs> that worked out pretty good. <laughs> uh, in the year 2000, after only working about 15 years at it, uh, I was recognized as a coach of the year because really of the uh, expanse uh, of the program at Tech in high schools and with all the uh, college people. This is me trying to encourage this guy to get on the platform and lift the heavy weight. And, You've got to believe you can lift it. <laughs> Come here, Coach. <laughs> and, uh, he's actually an officer, I think, in the Army now. He's a good guy, smart. Michael Kalitico is his name. And this guy is a chiropractor. That's a good thing to be when you're a <laughs> man. I wish I were one. <laughs> This is one of our teams. These are all tech lifters that were part of a larger group that went to Europe and competed in those games. And I was one of the coaches on two occasions. But this usually happened in August when we were starting school and they frowned on me going to Europe during registration. Okay, good advisements. <laughs> you might wonder, well, who are these people that live for Tech? This was the roster the last year I coached at Tech. I found two Menden people in the lineup. And they don't necessarily stay in the program. It's not a permanent thing. If you're not comfortable, if your schedule changes, 
if you feel like you've got to get A's instead of B's, you might want to leave the program. <laughs> they're, they're good reasons, and uh, occasionally they are have. But you see the variety of curriculum areas. They weren't all from physical education, where I was from. And uh, I like physical education. I'm surprised I got a degree in it. <laughs> but I did a, uh, as a faculty member, I taught kinesiology, physiology of exercise, sports sociology, a lot of those ology things. And you talk about hands-on. We got into that stuff. We go out and do it in, on the athletic field. So I related to it in a very positive way, the, the college experience. Can I tell them one quick story? <laughs> I got a call one morning, and my secretary said, Dr. Talton, somebody wants to talk to you. I said, fine, Sheila, put him on. It's, it's Arnold. I said, what? Arnold Schwarzenegger. I said, listen, it's early. I don't want this bull this morning. <laughs> It was Arnold. He had, a, he had a Sunday supplement in the parade magazine and papers, and somebody had called in and asked him about the top collegiate teams. And he called uh, Jack Lambert, uh, not Jack Lambert, uh, the guy that published Powerlifting USA, and he said, well, call Billy Jack at Tech. This is his number. And that's who I wrote those articles for. Billy Jack. How are you doing this morning? <laughs> I said, is this, is this really you? Or? Yes, it's me. <laughs> so I answered, I, I gave him some high brow schools that really didn't have the Army, the A&M team is great, and of course, Louisiana Tech. So I hung up and won long later that I got another call, and it's from the 16th floor, the Wiley Tower of Tech, the administrative level, and it was Dan Renault, the president. They only called me for one reason. I've done something wrong, and I'm in trouble. <laughs> they don't call me when I do it right. That's understood. I said, hi, Dr. Renault. What's going on? He said, did you see your name? And I mean, did you talk to Arnold? I said, I talked to Arnold almost every week. <laughs> <laughs> he left me alone. <laughs> I said, the Terminator ain't. <laughs> this, this is in pink because this is the girl's result out of our high school. I don't want you to think that I didn't work hard or something. This guy, Trey Cunningham, has got his doctorate, and he's a mover and a shaker in the sport, the power lift of the day. But he had me put on this beat in 2001, the last year I was there. And we, we had 120 women, 26 women, and we had four platforms, and we ran that beat off in four hours. Mm -hmm. That's quick for one of these power meets. And then the blue was the guys. We had 240 on those four platforms, and that took eight hours. Yeah, that's a 12-hour day. But uh, those were the winners. We had an excellent coach at uh, Alexandria Senior High named Dwayne Urbina. Of course, West Monroe, you know they're tough. And they did have Don Childs over there. He scored on us on the last play of the game to beat us my senior year. He swept around the left end, his right, out of the Notre Dame box, and the buzzer went off. I, could, I couldn't catch him to hurt him, but I wanted to. <laughs> and even when we went to Tech together, he could outmaneuver me. So we got even, though, uh, at some point. I'm going, we're getting down to the end of this thing. I don't want your crowd to diminish because of my lengthy testimony. <laughs> there we are. This was the greatest team we had at Tech, men and women's. And those are the top five, that wasn't all. But if you notice those scores, mm. almost double the next person. And these aren't shabby 
scooters. When they take a long trip, they're coming to play ball, so to speak. And we weren't trying to run the score up. We were trying to score more than they did. And as much as we could, I just wanted to know, is there anybody gaining on us on the second rank? Uh, uh, and I had good people helping. Some of my former lifters were outstanding people in managing what had to happen correctly at me. I'm turning my back to y'all. <laughs> this is one of my favorite families, the Parkers here, that came <laughs> over from us. Pardon me. You too. Man. So that's, uh, that was the story, and that's the way I ended my powerlifting career at Tech. And the guy that staged all that is Dwayne Urbina, and he's putting on a big meet this uh, coming weekend down at Ellick, the state championships that I told you had those numbers. And uh, I'll be officiating down there for three days in a row. This is, these are two. He's getting quite hold up. He's gotten hot because of the inactivity. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this one. Oh, okay. <laughs> these are two of his girls. He would send us from Alexandria some ready-made power lifters. You're not penalized by your size. You're penalized by what your size lifts. And uh, you, you saw her in, in that video. You didn't know who that little skinny girl was, but she could lift weights, uh, focus. And it's super experience to deal with them. Okay. Are you going to go through that book also? Look, I left for it No, I, <laughs> I do want to show you a couple uh, more. This is starting with 201. This is one of the outstanding girls that lifted. And this banner in the back is something we added a year or two and the girls or the guys if they won the national championship. And we went to the University of Texas and I thrived <clears throat> on the possibility that we could beat Texas at Austin. And we got in the gym one day and I put up that thing up in, as you know, part of our area where we stayed during the meet. And the meet director, a lady came up there and was indignant and told me I couldn't put that up. And I said, I didn't, I didn't say what some of you think. I said, we will, we'll take it down, but you shouldn't have asked us to do that. That's not good sportsmanship. Mm -hmm. and, and we beat Texas, and we were in, in Austin. And I tell you what, it was a great feeling to be able to do that. <laughs> and uh, at another meet, we were beating Texas, and uh, we were about to lose the lead, and our mascot came in, Champ. He's a bulldog, and he was wearing a squat suit and a belt, <laughs> and, a cape, and he had a bone. I said, Champ, they're doing this to us. Shake that bone. <laughs> and, uh, he threatened them with the bone, and things leveled out. And we <laughs> edged up and won that one because of an unfortunate injury to one of the uh, A and M girls. And we didn't cause it. It was just a. <laughs> I'm about ready to wrap this up. Um, I know y'all would be happy. Whoops! It's upside down. This is the Dunn family, and that's. That's Dr. Butch Dunn and his son, and I wrote down on there what his son could lift. His son weighed 163, I think, actual body weight, and squatted was 749, bench press 607, and deadlift 600. And he's got an older brother that makes him look kind of weak. I mean, living, it's remarkable. <laughs> Uh, I think, wait, I, I've got to get to this one. This is Wade Hooper, a 
if he looks like a character, you pegged him. <laughs> He's from Bolton High School. I met him when he was in high school. He had hair down to here. Being from Menden, I didn't like long hair on basketball. <laughs> but he is so good that I didn't scold him. I just flared him. <laughs> One day he came up and his hair <clears throat> was that short. You could hardly see it. He said, and it's been two years. I guess you're happy now. I said, <laughs> yes, actually, I'm finally happy again. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, he was inducted into the uh, Hall of Fame. He is on the page of Powerlifting USA. And the first three of us that were inducted into the Louisiana Powerlifting Hall of Fame, I was first, Wade was second, and Jennifer Ray was third. And they were all from Tech. Both of them are teachers in high school. And, uh, you know, I'm not tall. I'm five kind of 10, maybe nine and a half now. <laughs> and I'm standing around these powerlifters, they're like little blocks. They, and that's when I noticed how short they were. They helped me coach the team when they graduated. We didn't win that year. Army had a, they, they had a vendetta out on us. They were gonna get us and they were getting us in this meeting. And I knew how bad it was at about this point. I was almost falling out of the <laughs> Jennifer was mad, but you know, women get kind of anim I'm sorry, Carol, animated. And uh, I said, Jennifer, cool it. We'd get in trouble if you run up. And uh, Wade decided to dip tobacco. <laughs> and this is another one of the uh, depressing moments in a meeting. So I didn't want you to think it was all easy. I've got a whole other book, but that's another year and another story. <laughs> Appreciate your patience. It's just a lot of involvement with a lot of people. We accomplished what we were there to do. And a lot of these people uh, turned out to be very successful in their professions. And I think what they got from powerlifting, they had a clear challenge. They faced it, resolved it, overcame it, and were the better for it. That's what competition does if you do it the right way. And I appreciate, Carolyn, your patience tonight and everybody else. And I enjoyed the visit back to Menden and the museum. Thank you. I got a lot of them, so I think audience would be interested in hearing the story between you and when you and Coach Darty was practicing on the field and the guy kept running the play with You know what happened to you? Uh, a lot of things happened. <laughs> Uh, well, the time I got kicked, I was in a four-point stance, and Coach Darty got mad at somebody on this side of the line, and he passed that center, and I was down in my stance ready to go, and he kicks me in the butt. <laughs> you know, I just sit down. I'm like, what is wrong with you today? <laughs> I didn't know if I'd done something wrong. I had to look around and decide. That may have been the time. <laughs> it could, but he had a gentle side. In, in a heavy lineman drill in the first five minutes of practice, the week of the Homer game, I was going against Billy Joe Booth, one of the best linemen to play at Mendon and played at LSU. I had to play against him every day, and if I owe anybody for being a successful player to some extent, it was him. But he got after me one day and hit me with a forearm, and my bar came back in my mouth and broke these two teeth off almost at the gum line. I spit them out. I said, my two best teeth, I said. I 
and one of them was hurting because I had an exposed nerve, so I was trying to breathe through my nose, and this one was hanging on that snag of the one. So uh, Coach Darty and his compassion for my plight sent up for a mouthpiece. They were kind of voluntary, so he sent up and this guy gives, gives me this Malmont mouthpiece and they put it on there and somebody hits me again and he sends me up to the dentist. And uh, But I played that week against Homer. I, I don't know how that came out, but uh, I knew not not to have my teeth knocked out, and not to have my nose broke. Sammy Joe Odom, my teammate, the other guard, he is a little All-American at Northwestern. He got his nose broke in practice. Coach Darty was just out of the pro leagues, and he could, he was the medical guy. He comes up and sticks his fingers in Sammy Joe's nose and sets I hear that cartilage part, and I'm backing off, and I try to see if my finger will fit in my nose. I said, his fingers are big. He will split my nose open. Never, I'll never tell him. If I get a broke nose, it's just going to be broke. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> it's getting kind of deep in here. <laughs> Well, there's a lot more, and maybe in the future when uh, the, the, the speaker reservoir, which I'm sure is plentiful right now, runs out and I'm still around, I'll, I'll come back for a return. <laughs>